for obviously um, you know jumping on the Scooby Space podcast. It's a little bit of a different one this one, uh, a little bit of an exciting one to obviously tie in with Manchester Tech Week. Um, it's a very interesting topic. So what we'll be discussing today is the illustrious skills gap, and obviously, but we're going to be bringing in how AI um, affects this, and do we think it makes it better? Do we think it makes it worse? Um, but before we get into it, obviously, um, Gareth, if you could give a quick introduction to yourself first, mate. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Gareth Neal, um, co-founder of Parker Neal uh, Limited, um, startup, uh, been going around the last 12, 13 months. Mm -hmm. um, all things cybersecurity, data governance, data privacy. Uh, my career spans over 17 years from uh, being an internal auditor uh, for my sins uh, in NHS. Uh, started to do cyber in my first year and actually loved it. Um, little did I know what was about to happen <laughs> seven years, 17 years ago. Um, but yeah, worked for the regulator, the ICO, um, worked for PwC, um, all things cybersecurity. Uh, I've worked in small boutiques, worked in industry. Uh, my last uh, permanent kind of job as an employee uh, was uh, as a CISO mm. uh, in a fund investment management business uh, globally. Um, so going from a consultant and kind of advising how to do things to actually, you know, frontline and actually being on the hook and the yep. stress and the pressures that, that being a, you know, a CISO or a you know, security leader, whatever title you want to give it, uh, brings uh, is quite insightful. And now I come back into professional services uh, and uh, on my own. So, uh, yeah. It's what exciting. made you um, think, I want to give myself a real headache here and start up your own business? What, what, what was that about? <laughs> yeah. So... You know, some a lot a lot of people have asked me that, yeah. and they've said, "Look, you've got the perception of a cushy, well-paid job." Um, I mean, very, you know, that's the perception. You know, being a CISO <laughs> is not for the uh, faint the, 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 the faint-hearted. Um, but I'd always said to myself, "I want to start my own business before I'm 40." Mm. Um, I'm 37, just to, <laughs> just to put that out there. Um, but that was as a young child. I knew I wanted to do something of my own. Um, and uh, it just so happens that my career took the cyber and data path. Um, I met a fantastic um, kind of colleague uh, in my previous job, who is the other co-founder of uh, Parker Neal. Um, and when you kind of get that bond and trust with someone, um, it kind of gave both of us that urge mm. to say, let's, let's do it, let's, let's, it. let's go for it. Um, and uh, yeah, away we went a year ago. So Brilliant. yeah, good stuff. Fantastic. Rob, over to you, mate, if you can uh, give us a quick introduction to yourself as well. Yeah, sure. So I'm uh, Rob Mukherjee, Director of Transformation at Every Cloud. Um, we're a security, uh, cloud security business, been going since 2016. Um, and we're sort of helping people, you know, as, as more and more businesses move into that cloud first um, environment, you know, and we see networking and security all coming together and the cloud becomes ubiquitous. How do we make sure that um, you know we can help them on that journey and make sure you know they can solve problems such as disparate legacy tools lots of which was on prem clunky vpns resource challenges all those things that this kind of cloud first journey brings how to make sure that security uh, keeps uh, keeps up with it um my background so i've been in tech for uh, a lot of years starting in starting in liverpool with marconi um and then but it's been in manchester now um for I've got on for 17 years. Hmm. Uh, firstly, with uh, with Vodafone, I led their um, their their Northwest Enterprise business, hmm. um, and then been with Every Cloud now since 2018. Um, and a big thing for me, and also you know, big thing for me is the community. So I, I loved, you know, Manchester being the northern hub for Vodafone, yep. and built a really good network around um, this part of the world. Uh, and then moving to Every Cloud, which is a smaller business. I sort of I get my community buzz having founded uh, or co-founded Northern Infosec Leaders back in 2020. So just as we come in out of the worst of COVID, you know, thought well, there's obviously lots of stuff happens down in uh, down in London. What can we do to really build a community of Infosec leaders um, in the north? Um, you know, start with Manchester, but trying to do things you know around uh, around the whole of the north. Fantastic. No, and obviously, like you say, with the the community side, obviously, you know, I'm a big advocate of that for that as well. Obviously, you know, it's just weird, isn't it, in security? Like, uh, it seems big, but it's it's not as big as you mm -hmm. think. When you start speaking to people, it's like, oh, do you know him? Do you know him? And it, it's fantastic to obviously see. Um, 
one thing I did want to bring to light is when we're recording this Monday the 15th of May, Rob's an Everton fan, Gareth's a City fan, and yesterday it looks like <coughs> City must have won the league by beating Everton. It was a bit of a trance. Oh, I, think, yeah. I think Arsenal uh, have kind of given us a bit of a, a, bit of a push. Yeah, 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. I didn't want to mention that, Rob, to be fair, you know. Well, no, thanks, so thanks bit, you bit, for not mentioning it. But to be, to be fair, like, you know, rather City than Liverpool. I shouldn't really say this on air, should I? But we, we, actually, <laughs> Liverpool are one of our clients, as are Everton. <laughs> but Brilliant. as an Everton fan, you know, Liverpool was always our big rivalry. So um, dare I say it. And, and all, my, all my Liverpool fan friends know, like, uh, we'd support City ahead of Liverpool to win in the league just for, a, just for an easy life. But to be honest, at the moment, I wouldn't care if Liverpool wins the league as long as we stay. If we can finish 17th or better, yeah, of course. Avoid that I don't there. care who wins anything. <laughs> Brilliant. So, cool, because we could be all, all, all day with that. Yeah. So, um, let's obviously delve in. So, just to remind the audience again what we're talking about. So, it's them, them famous words, the skills gap in security. Um, but obviously, what, we didn't just want to do it on the skills gap because, um, you know, it's been talked about time and time again. Obviously, you know, we will be bringing it up. But we wanted to bring in sort of AI. Uh, so, obviously, that explosion as well, what's happening recently. And... Through our discussions, obviously, you know, before this pod, we thought, like, is, is he going to make it better? Is he going to make it worse? Like, what what, what do we actually think? And, and we could, yeah, we'll, we'll find out if we can get to an answer. So, now, when it comes to the skills gap, I'm, I'm going to start this off, actually. Um, and I might be completely wrong, but essentially my view on the skills gap in cyber is a sense of, I don't think it's true. Um um, I think I've said it on previous pods before, but essentially I, I understand the ideology behind the skills gap. I understand where they're coming from, but I do not think that there is a skills gap because obviously, like I say, I'm a cybersecurity recruiter and I speak to people all day. I speak to talent all day, every day who sometimes struggle to find roles. I think what's happened is over the past five, six, maybe a bit more years, seven years, um, whenever there's been roles going out, I think there's been a big game of Chinese whispers through the politics of companies. I think... Um, let's just say a seesaw writes a job spec for a security engineer and I think because it, sometimes it has to go to the CIO or the CEO and it has to go to the recruitment manager then it has to go to the recruitment assistant and then even sometimes out to like agencies like myself and through that Chinese whispers there's just been I think through non-technical people getting involved in the in the in the recruitment process I think that um, Stuff that are, are, are valued are, are getting lost and something that isn't as valued is getting more emphasis than it should do because uh, eventually if you, if you don't understand the technology, it just becomes a checkbox exercise, which is a dangerous game to play because you're dehumanising a job if you're just trying to make it you know, a little bit of a checklist. Um, so I think by the time it goes out, people are going, like, let's bring in the, 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 the gender uh, uh, reason on this point. Um for males, they only need to hit 80% of a job spec to even hit the application. Obviously, I think we were discussing this, Rob, weren't we? Um, but for females, um, if they don't even meet just 20% of it, am I right in thinking about it? Just 20% of it, they won't even apply in the beginning. So they need to hit even more so than 80 to 85%, uh, whereas males only need to hit about 20%. And they'll be like, yeah, it's I'll throw my hat into the ring. Um, so straight away, um, you've got the gender issue there. Um, so no wonder, you know, uh, there's a battle to get more and more women in technology, more and more women into cyber because of a that. So that's not helping. Um, but yeah, to kind of summarise that that point, I understand why there's a, a, a skills gap because by the time specs are going out, there's just nothing to to what the job's actually like, and therefore you're not getting the CVs back. Uh, and like, obviously mm. you both hired people before and you're both like, well, you know, this isn't the person I was looking for. Shock horror. Um, it's because the specs changed about seven or eight times. So that is my rant on it. Now, <laughs> I'll go to Rob first. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What's, what's your initial point? I, I, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with your points around if it was, a, is there a skills app, yes or no? Mm. I'm definitely more on the no side. Mm. Um, I think skills are just skills anyway, when we recruit and, you know, when, when we've had successful recruits, be it at every cloud or be it previously in Vodafone, it's always recruiting for behaviors and talents. And then the skills can be taught. Mm. And, you know, we've, we've made a couple of recruits recently into every cloud um, and they're not cyber through and through at all, but brilliant attitudes, brilliant, you know, brilliant raw behaviors and talents. 
and they've both been in the business probably you know only about a month now but they're already generating their own ideas and they're not scared to try things and um you know to me it's always recruit for raw talent mm -hmm. and the right attitude the right behaviors and the skills will come i think from a recruitment perspective recruitment's just hard anyway generally right whether it be for side whether it be for sales whether it be for teaching recruitment is just hard that doesn't always mean there's a skills gap necessarily mm -hmm. what do you think Gareth? yeah I, I mean i agree uh to a large extent um just to kind of give you some examples so um back when i was in my kind of consulting days um we um had a client that effectively had a, a capacity challenge um and so i goes out into the network of uh the organization pwc at the time and trying to find the right caliber of person to come into the team to then serve the client mm. was proving really really difficult so we were going through a um a, a period of scale up within that cyber practice of you know getting the right people can they also turn the hand to sales as well as delivery and, and all that kind of mixture and in the end um i cast the net to actually outside of cyber mm. and managed to remarkably find a fantastic um, accountant mm. believe it or not um and uh, i won't name her, her name but if she does listen to this then she'll she'll know exactly uh, what we're talking about um accountant through and through do an external audit she loved aviation and the passion and the interest one of aviation but also of oh kind of get what cyber's doing and I want to know more. Um, she's now absolutely thriving, um, employed by this particular organization um, and is leading their, their cyber um, kind of GRC proposition and, mm. and all that kind of good stuff. Now, that's taking investment in time, patience, and also someone's ability to want to learn mm. and have that dedication to learn to end up in a career from an accountant into leading in quite a high pressured role, uh, you know, a, a, a cyber team. Um, but then on the flip side, uh, from my CISO uh, days of, of recruiting and, you know, the challenge is there, but going back to having the right patience and the time mm. to dedicate and also the team to dedicate to young individuals in, in this example is important because if you're a lone wolf and there's just one of you, and you're trying to get, you know, the gold star and you're going to have to pay for it, that's quite a, a difficult mm. challenge to meet. But um, apprenticeship program is launched. Um, we um, find a, a young individual, and this individual was actually a first responder for elderly people in the home that wear the button around the neck, mm. they've had a fall, press, I've had a fall. Now, nothing to do with cyber didn't go to uni, um, didn't study even core IT at college. But what the individual had was the ability to deal extremely well under pressure. Mm. Now that might be an old lady in home, she's pressed the button and also, you know, she's hard of hearing. Mm. And all you've got is a phone call with this first responder and this individual is absolutely flying mm. now uh, in, in the team that obviously I've, I've left. Um, so again, it just shows that enough dedication, patience mm. to bring people on a journey, you can find amazing people out there. And I've, I've certainly experienced it. They don't have to be the polished um, article. Well, you both very said um, very similar things there. Um, in the sense of you both look for these 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 human behaviorisms. That's that's the that's the first thing you look for. Well, how, how could a computer ever ever sort of win uh, in that battle? Um, because they just don't have the, the, the human experiences that we have. So are we rounding this up early? Are we saying that like, yeah, 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 no, it's not going to make it better. So what's your thoughts on that? I guess in terms of is, you know, computers or AI or machine learning going to make it better? I think this is when you, you know, you, you can say even before you get to cybersecurity, I, I was watching them. Um, Laura Koonsberg on Sunday yesterday, and she was interviewing um, Imbad Mostak, who's the founder of a company called Stability AI, who do all the, the, the 
you know, generate the images based on scouring images all over the place, a lot of the internet and generate images, for example. Um, and the conversation they're having, and I think um, Sir Patrick Valance, who was the just exited as chief senior, chief scientific, scientific advisor for the government, you know, saying, well, God, you know, tons and tons of jobs are going to be impacted. Um, so there's a much bigger conversation in cybersecurity about AI. But if we do bring it to cybersecurity, this is where I think it comes to red corner versus blue corner in terms of the criminals can really harness cybersecurity and the defenders or the protectors, the cybersecurity teams can, sorry, can really harness um, AI mm. and the defenders of cybersecurity teams can really harness AI to protect and who wins that race. Now, I think to your point in terms of, um, yeah, of course, we still need humans. Probably the, um, the analogy I might use is, let's say, autonomous cars. So a few years ago, I think Elon Musk was saying we'd have robo-taxis all, all over the place by like 2022 or something, mm -hmm. and we haven't. Um, and I think even, you know, yes, will we have autonomous cars one day? I think we will, absolutely. Will we have autonomous socks, security operation centers one day? I think we will, absolutely. But in both cases, you'll still need human intervention. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're moting down the, the most away at like, you know, 70 miles an hour, and then some, you know, uh, something just comes flying across. Mm. You'd, you know, you'd, you'd push the brakes on or you'd, you'd steer in a different it's direction. It, Similarly, it's something's up. always going to happen, um, be it with autonomous cars or be it with, um, with security. I think the thing to remember is there's things that machines and AI can do a lot, lot faster than humans can. With all this data around, you know, the analyzing vast, vast amounts of data mm. um, can be done by machines and then making predictions based upon that data. So that's the, you know, that's your classic machine learning stuff. Obviously your AI gets more into trying to train these machines to think and simulate human thought, which they can do to an extent. So, you know, you get into things like virtual sock analysts that can make decisions and, you know, you know, it, it, is this a phishing attack or not? Is this malware or not? And you'll get, you know, the vast majority of them will be true, but occasionally you'll get a false positive or you'll get a false negative. Mm. So you, you'll be able to, you know, massively increase the amount of, um, uh, amount of work that can be done by machines if you're in the security teams, mm. but you're still going to need some element of human. And similarly, on the criminal side, you'll have, uh, you know, criminals finding, you know, using AI tools to scour the web for all, you know, all, all sorts of patterns. They'll be looking at, um, you know, using AI to exploit, you know, uh, exploit uh, vulnerabilities um, in the targets they're going to attack. But both criminal and protector mm. will still have humans maybe doing different things, but AI can do a lot of the, uh, a lot of that volume work. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of that? So I think, um, and I'll, I'll kind of <clears throat> eat my own words, if, if it were, uh, for my uh, six, seven years of thinking um, that was, you know, as we've just spent you know, 15 minutes talking around, um, the skills gap is a myth. Um, and strong believer, you know, I think we all are, that it is a myth. But I'm almost, and I never thought I'd, I'd say this, but I'm almost at that point now because of where AI machine learning is, is going as to whether there now will become mm. a skills gap. Because ultimately, and Rob, to your point about the, the, you know, the human element, if the kind of the skills and the education and the grassroots and, you know, like, you know, what we've learned and, and what we've learned professionally and, you know, in, in the classrooms and at events, uh, you know, has been good enough or, you know, allowed us to at least defend, you know, the, the modern day threats. Is there going to be a skill gap now created for how humans respond to AI based threats? And, and when I look at myself, um, and quite a realist uh, most of the time, it's almost like akin to um, back in 2018. I use, dare I say, the, the coin GDPR. Uh, I hate that word. Um, but overnight, everyone was a GDPR specialist. Almost overnight. So, you know, professional services, everyone got on the bandwagon and, 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 and whatnot. Um, but 
to a degree, that was still relatively safe mm. to be able to advise on that and learn on the job and, and all that kind of good stuff. And that's pretty much what the market did. That's, that's fine. It isn't going to be that with AI. It's not going to be we can just learn and we can expect humans to understand how to fully defend an organization or fully advise our clients because we've got to learn very quickly mm. and adapt very quickly with what is about to happen, what is already happening. So when we put it back to the skills gap, it's that kind of, hmm, maybe it is now starting to, to emerge. Um, and I think anyone that kind of says, I'm an AI expert, for me, yeah. Mm, okay. I think maybe it's a different yeah. type of skill as well because no matter how much the you know the the machines can do, you still need clear architecture and clear strategy. But also, whatever you know, the analogy I was thinking as you were talking then was like industrial revolution. So you know when the when the printing press appeared or steam powered appeared or or the you know crop rotation whatever it was, there was different types of skills then needed. In the fact we were now using a printing press or, or steam power etc yeah. um i think now you know each and i think we're on the like the fifth industrial revolution now where each one accelerates quicker and quicker doesn't it yeah so the time you have to try and adjust is a lot shorter um and then when there's the baddies um you know it, it becomes a it becomes a race again so yeah, I, I kind of buy your point. How, how how do you close that gap? Yeah. And it is a race. It, it, it is a yeah. it is a race. And at some point, does at some point does it become a race against the machines? Because the machines start to then, you know, it, 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 there's, there's there's the criminals, there's the security teams. There is this thing that obviously lots of experts are worried about now. Is but what if AI actually starts to outthink humans? Then where do we go? Is it? We, we like talking about the Terminator films or something. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I mean, go back about five years ago um, and, uh, you know, st started in my, my CISA role. Um, and they were looking at um, insurance policies mm. uh, corporately um, and obviously doing all the kind of the underwriting and, and, and risk assessments. And um, the business at the time was looking at robotics. Didn't do any manufacturing. <laughs> you know, mm. there are a lot of lost people thinking robotics. All we do is use data, and that's our, our model. Like, what, what, what do you mean robotics? Um, and I remember myself not fully understanding um, the the kind of the problem, but also looking at what the solutions were. And you know, one of the circumstances where you start to learn and think very quickly on your feet. And I asked a, a question in a in a, a meeting. I said, well. From, a, from an insurance company perspective, um, if we're looking at robotics and kind of, you know, elements of machine learning there, and you're looking at what cover an insurance provider will, will give for that, what if it starts to think for itself, Bob, back to your mm. point earlier, what, and this was five years ago, mm. right? And a room of just blank faces like who, who is this guy like yeah. what what a thing for itself what, what's he on him um you know fast forward five years and actually that was just a simple use case of you're insured for x but if that thinks for itself yeah. and starts to do malicious things or things you don't want it to do i can't imagine the insurance provider is gonna mm. <laughs> you know gonna support that or pay out for that and um and i don't think at that time we really ever got to the point of well what does that mean yeah um and you know it's another totally different uh, story and party line probably not one for this uh well, cast but no definitely and i want to just throw it out there and see what we can get to is so what is it that ai um actually has over a human is it literally just speed and resource because obviously humans get tired they need to go to bed at the end of the day i know that in the global world now, you know, companies are becoming more remote and we do follow some methodology to combat that. But that, again, uh, you know, the, the workload that machine can do forward, for example, like you say, in the Industrial Revolution, when that came about, like that just pff, advanced it tenfold. What is it that AI has over humans? Putting everything aside, obviously we can get into humans in a second. What, what, what is their advantages? Talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I mean, look, you, you mentioned it at the start there around speed, pace, efficiency. Um, we do have to sleep. Mm. Um, although I don't think many of us get that much sleep <laughs> in our, in our well, roles. Uh, yeah, um, you know, I think the days of, uh, Robbie said around socks, you mm. know, in terms of shift patterns and, you know, follow the sun, uh, mm. you know, methods in, in global businesses. And um, I think that has to pass. Um, and when we start looking at AI um, and being able to predict and the large volumes of yeah. inbound data and threats and analysis. That pattern recognition, there. isn't it? That, the, 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 yes, it's the, 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 you know, it's, yes, it's the volume of data and the speed, but the, the pattern recognition and making in time predictions yeah. in the moment is a huge thing. And, and, and it's, it's that, isn't it? It's the in time. Mm. Um, you don't get the luxury of, mm. of time. Um, and I think there is so much burnout occurring globally now you know whether that's with SOC teams in-house uh, teams hybrids that that AI for good actually will start to become uh, commonplace but also a huge advantage for security teams now obviously you've got that hybrid of you still need the human element hence the skills of well how how do we now start to use AI and interact with it for good mm. um, but I, you know we are at that point now that the technology is there um, yes there's the you know the global discussions around you know you know government policies governance around it how can we control it etc and um, but I think with the tooling that is there um, you can start to tease out some really cute kind of solutions yeah. and, and almost the time's right to do that nice no, and I want to flip the question. <laughs> what what is it that humans have um, as opposed to AI, um, and 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 what gives you know us us the advantage in, in that front? Yeah, I suppose. Um, just before I come on to that, I think one one thing I was going to mention in terms of the, um, you know, the AI pieces, things like malware now only have a shelf life of like a couple of days often, hmm. because. Even without AI, technology, you know, people can spot it and then write it into, you know, the the technology that's trying to protect you. So, like, let's say, secure email gateway for argument's sake, you know, can work on what we call known signatures, known threats. Um, the bit where I think AI's had to come in is because now the criminals know that these are morph, the, 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 these have a certain shelf life. You can have malware that morphs every few hours to beat the protective secure email gateway or the, the you know uh, the, the the web proxy or whatever it is um and that's where you need this machine learning ai that can start to recognize anomalies in behaviors or, or start clustering similar types of attacks hmm. um so, so i just want to say that yep. in terms of what um <laughs> what humans have the Please first thing i was going to say i was going to say like humanity the the the, the the perspective is so difficult to put into words because if you could put it into words, you could write it into code and, <laughs> and make a machine. Yeah. Then it's but it's like the way you you let's say if you use the card, you suddenly react if it's it's human you know, instinct, a, a, isn't it? Yeah, human instinct, it's exactly. Human, human instinct that that you can't really put into words. It's exactly that human instinct. Thanks for answering the question for me. But is that, <laughs> that when you see like you know an old person, it's in the dark, but you just spot an old person across the road. Oh, you think you know just sometimes it it just doesn't feel right. My gut, there's just something. There's just something in the back of my mind or something in my gut that doesn't feel right. But so that's one element. I think the other thing is that clear thing, you know, visionary architecture and strategy. I think as well. You could argue, well, a machine could do that. But I think again, when you develop, there's a human, hmm. there's a human element to it. And I know it's a bit of a cop out of the question, but it is that, no. it is that human. I completely agree to comment and, on that. It, it, yeah. it, it, it is that thing. It's that X factor. It, it's that consciousness. It, it's the human instinct. Mm. It's like you say, if, if something runs out in the middle of the road, your a human's initial thing is do not cause harm to it. Yeah. I swerve it, and that's 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 the X factor. Where a machine, it's black, it's white, it's it's it, it's factual and it's objective, and that has its advantages, which is why we're having the conversation. But it will never. I don't think it will ever be able to reciprocate a human because a human's developed that um and I, just from previous conversations with previous guests on podcast the amount of psychology that comes back into security is, is mm. it, i think there's been an underlying theme on every single yeah, psychology, podcast emotion emotion yeah 
that's yeah. exactly it and and I, that a computer will never be able to reciprocate it it'll always be able to no good bad if it gets coded in but like we we understand that that feeling from our, our past behaviors from our upbringing and that's something that ai will never have um that that's that i think that's sort of like i completely agree on the advantages for humans so to kind of tie it nicely into the skills gap then do you think that ai if i kind of had to put you in a box now gareth and said like I think you're alluding to, yeah, I think AI will potentially further the skills gap. Is that is that your lane of thought then from what we've discussed so far? If if we let it be and we kind of don't kind of, you know, go back to the grassroots and, you know, back to education and, you know, what that in you know, young the young kind of community of people mm-hmm. coming into, you know, college, uni, vocation, uh, into the workplace, um, you know. It's like you know, kids are born with a phone in the hands these days, you know. So it's that's probably a scary thought, <laughs> as to you know we're talking like this as we've been uh, you know educated and brought up. But uh, you know who who knows? But I think if if we stand still and we treat AI just as a tool as to how we can get benefit out of, which is pretty much what a lot of the you know, industry at large outside of cyber is is looking to do, I think it will further the the skills gap. Um, or they make it worse. It, well, there isn't one. I, it, probably, oh, yeah. it will probably, I'll, I'll, I'll retrace back, it will probably create that a skills gap that, you know, everyone is harping on about that actually, you know, let's face it, there isn't, you know. But I think it will start to create for the first time a real cyber skills gap if mm. we stand still. Um, hence, yeah, we, you know, we've got we've to gotta do something about that. Mm. Yeah, and it's, um, I mentioned earlier that I was watching that, that Laura Koonsberg podcast um, with, Nimrod Mostak, and whether you like the analogy or not, he he was saying that um, the economic impact of AI generally will be bigger than COVID. But he made this then point that something will happen that will suddenly create a gap, and everyone sits up and takes notice, or will create something. And the analogy he drew was when Tom Hanks got COVID, everyone went, "God, this is real." And then the gap again, not a skills gap, but the resource gap in the health mm-hmm. service and, and the how people are supposed to do it, the lack of clarity, the lack of strategy in terms of, well, how do you deal with COVID? All those sorts of things saying something will happen AI wise that will mean people go, nobody know, people don't know the strategy. There's no clear plan that there's a gap of resources. People don't know what to do. And of course, whether there is that big event or not, whatever it will be, loads and loads of tasks, and I use the word tasks as opposed to job, tasks will be affected in the same way that have been the in the previous industrial revolutions and it's how what are the new tasks that then need to be done and who does them and what skills are required yeah. and there is a lot of uncertainty mm. about it and because the way the world accelerates these days we'll have a lot shorter time to come up with the answers i think mm. compared to previous generations and maybe AI, ai will give us the answers <laughs> maybe oh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, ask, ask the, chat gpt that's circle, <laughs> yeah. well that's exactly my next mm. question it was like so how do you think do you think that AI could actually help us? If the, if the, I know that we all were in agreement at the start in the fact that like we don't think there's a skills gap, but for argument's argument's sake, let's say that there is. Um, do you think that AI can actually help close it? Or have we just answered it there and say, not really? What do you think? Oh, it's like help, <laughs> helping close the current gaps. But I guess it's, and again, I, I keep, for my own benefit, using this analogy of the Industrial Revolution. So when you know, the printing press appeared or steam power appeared. I guess it's then all about how you harness that. You still need the engineers. How do you harness you? it? So again, with AI, if it's a, you know, someone still needs to work out how to harness it. And then if you say, well, AI could work that out, well then who works out how you harness that bit of AI that's working out? You kind of, yeah. somebody somewhere has to work out how you harness this for good. Because for sure people will, People are harnessing stuff for bad the same way when, you know, dynamite was invented mm. for good, mm. but people found a way to use explosives for bad. Mm. Mm. What do you think, Gareth? Do you think I AI think... could actually help close the gap? I think it can, okay. uh, if, if used correctly. But if we take it up uh, several tiers um, and we look at kind of organisational change okay. and commitment and buy-in and leadership and, and all that kind of um, kind of sphere, 
there still needs to be that buying from the board, the commitment. You know, people harp on about investment and oh, we want more money and we want more this and more that. You can always do pretty cool, good stuff. I say on a budget, but you know, you don't have to always moan about oh, you know, cash. Yeah. There's always means and ways, but you need the commitment. Yeah. Now, what I'm seeing from now, you know, a, a, an advisor back into industry is people have become scared of um, AI, mm. but it doesn't necessarily translate into we're going to do something about it because the worst thing you can try and do is put someone into a corner or apply the scare tactics to think, well, we're now going to do something about it. It doesn't work. That's, mm. that's the wrong, wrong approach to it. So we've got to somehow embrace it and learn to kind of see the, the benefits first and not just see it as this you know, threat that's going to take over the world, but really understand it as to how it can work for um, you know, our business or others um, and, and you know, embrace it and, and, and look at it from, from that perspective. Um, and kind of one example that, that I would give um, is kind of probably still two, three years ago, um, we're still in that mindset. If we take data and how we defend the business, um, you go off with all these control tactics and we're going to apply, you know, X flavor of InfoSec controls and, you know, we'll do some pen testing and, and all will be good. Um, but fundamentally, businesses miss the point. Mm. And the point is, where's the data? Yeah. So this is a common challenge that I found uh, uh, you know, years gone by. And so if you're in that mindset of, we're gonna go and discover the data and all the unstructured risky stuff, it is painful, really painful because you've got uh, clunky technology. You, it takes ages to set up an a a API uh, to them. It's gonna point at that data source and we're gonna ingest it and all mm. that kind of good stuff. Now, in the eye of you know AI and the capability, something that, to your point, Rob, about tasks, something that might have taken a day, a week, a month, can be done in a minute. Yep. And so with the data element and kind of what, what we're seeing at the minute in industry is you can quickly use the power of AI to go, well, there's the data. Yes, you still need the humans to be able to, well, what are we asking it and how does that then interface and configure? Um, but that's just one example relating it back to cyber and data that you can positively use AI to deliver efficiently and effectively a proposition that actually previously was such a headache and the industry kind of went, well, we'll just put X flavor of framework and do some testing and do some technical controls and a bit of training and we'll actually forget about the data. Mm -hmm. And that was something that's still common today, but certainly in my, uh, my experience, uh, you know, far too common. And you've painted like a, you know, a general sort of business scenario there, because whilst, of course, today, when we, you know, or for today's session, when we're talking about the skills that we're honing in intensely on AI and partly that will make it more provocative in a way. In reality, when we're talking to businesses, we're talking about the overall business situation. And from a cybersecurity perspective, you know, the sorts of things that are coming out are, you know, lots of disparate legacy tools and they're looking for, well, how do we start to bring that together, simplify our estate, consolidate our estate? They've got resource challenges because socks have got to run 24 seven. We've talked about socks a little bit. You know, they've, they've got the hybrid world of working now. Um, you know, lots of people not in the office, you know, branches of one. You've got the um, regulations and, you know, all the compliance things and insurance uh, requirements you've got to keep up with. And it's all those sorts of things. So you're looking at holistic solutions for people or for businesses. And AI is part of sometimes under the radar AI happens to be you know something in a in a technology vendors solution for argument's sake it's part of the overall discussion in terms of what can we do protect to, to, to you know to, to help a business with their cyber security transformation and also it's part of the thinking when we're thinking of what our attackers doing but it's part of it and when you when you think of it like that you know it can help um, it can help save a lot of resource in terms of, you know, looking through every phishing email that comes through if I use a, you know, if I use a, a, a simple example. But it's just part of that conversation. And that sort of makes it a little bit less scary, a little bit more here and now, as opposed to just thinking about where, I, where AI is going. Yeah. So 
to summarise then, I'm going to be very cruel and I'm going to give you the question. Does AI make the skills gap worse or better? If I had to put you in a box, Rob. I would say better. It, it improves the situation. Okay. Gareth? I'm glad you asked uh, Rob first. <laughs> Do I have to justify um, why? Or will, or will we just please, get out, get out of you? Wait, <laughs> wait, wait till you've heard my response. All right, go on, go on. Like, well, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think kind of going back to what I said earlier about if it's embraced um, and you get the right level of attention on it, mm -hmm. um, then in time, it probably improves. Um, but it has to have that real, you know, embracing. Mm -hmm. um, Otherwise, it will probably then generate a skills gap. Yeah, do, do you agree? Yeah, and I think the, the reality is there'll, there'll be a transition. It's what, is that, what does that transition look like? And I think, um, you know, one thing we haven't talked about, you, you, you'll often hear people saying, well, does AI really exist anyway? Is it, is it AI? Have these, are these AI tools or is it machine learning or what's the difference kind of thing? But I think what it... What it will do will enable humans to focus on more valuable work that only humans can do. Um, and therefore, I think, you know, you, you, you move to a different set of skills and you remove all these tasks. Um, but I, my general view is, from a security defense perspective, I think it makes it, gives you know, reduces any skills gap or makes the situation better in the you know in, in the long term perfect cool okay well i'm sure this will cause a lot of debate in the comment section um but first i just want to you know thank gareth thank rob for obviously jumping on and discussing a very difficult topic uh to say the least um so if anybody's got any questions uh or wants any more further information from the chaps i'll be sure to get all the contact information um in the link below uh rob you're obviously doing some fantastic stuff with the northwest information security leaders group um so obviously get information on the obviously gareth i know you've just is it your website has just gone live this week uh, today yeah L literally new new website today uh, so new brand look and feel, um, you know, gone are the, the first year startup DIY uh, days and we're actually here to stay uh, in the market. So I thought we'd, uh, you know, bring a bit more professionalism uh, to our to our look. And uh, yeah, so yeah. Love it. Today so I'll get all the information for both of them um, in the comment section. But uh, once again, thanks so much for jumping on, chaps. Thank you. Thank you.